Tampa, Florida is the second largest metro area and America's third biggest state. With over 3 million residents in the overall Tampa Bay metro area, it's also one of the fastest growing metro areas in the US. So we're dealing with a city with a metro population around the size of the Twin Cities, and it's larger than metro areas like Denver and Portland. You would think that it might have a comprehensive transit agency, or at least just a couple of light rail or bus rapid transit lines, right? Well, Tampa does have transit, but it's not quite fitting for a city of its size. So let's dive into the Tico Streetcar, Tampa's only frequent transit line. Like pretty much any other city in North America, during the 20th century, Tampa had a vast network of streetcars that ran all across the city, servicing many neighborhoods and helping connect many mixed-use walkable neighborhoods like Hyde Park and Ybor. However, during the mid-20th century, things took a turn for this pattern of development. For one, America was set on having the car be the only form of transportation within our cities. With planners such as Robert Moses, who were proposing highways to cut right through the hearts of our cities, with little regard for those who lived in the future paths of these highways. Along with this, the invention of air conditioning made living in these cities across the Sun Belt a lot more tolerable during the summer months. This along with deindustrialization in the Midwest and the Northeast caused a massive housing boom in cities like Tampa, and with the popularization of cars and highways, planners could continue to sprawl to their heart's content, removing the wetlands and forests around Tampa, Florida. And along with this came the fall of the streetcar, with the last of the tracks being removed around 1949. Following this, Tampa would rely entirely on infrequent and slow bus services around the city for the foreseeable future of its public transit. Side note, Tampa did experiment with a people mover in the 1980s with the Harbor Island People Mover. However, due to its high operating cost, short route, and low ridership, it was shut down in 2006. In the late 90s, Tampa did show some interest of getting rail transit back into downtown Tampa. Now, don't be mistaken, there wasn't much actual interest in getting an actual transit system built, but more of a tourist-oriented streetcar. And through a mix of tax funding from local businesses along the planned route, and some settlement money that came from the removal of said Harbor Island People Mover, the Tico streetcar first opened to riders on October 19, 2002, to a cost of around $30 million. The city and Hillsborough area regional transit, also known as HART, didn't have high expectations for ridership on the streetcar. However, ridership actually exceeded expectations in year one and kept climbing. In 2010, the most recent extension would be added to the streetcar, extending it a whole third of a mile or half a kilometer. This extension would cost $5 million and created the new western terminus at Whiting Station in the Financial District. The Tico streetcar runs on a 2.7 mile long route starting in downtown Tampa's financial district at Whiting Street Station. It then heads east, stopping at stations like Dick Greco Plaza and the Amelie Arena before turning north and running through the Channel District. After passing the public station, the line enters the Ybor City neighborhood and begins running east again until it reaches its terminus at Centennial Park Station. The line mostly operates on its own separated right-of-way, with it being mostly single-tracked, with some sections of double-tracking to allow for multiple streetcars to operate along the line. The line does, however, lack signal priority, meaning that you will be waiting for lights to change before the streetcar can go. But if you want priority with seeing my videos earlier, Early, then feel free to check out my Patreon. You can also get extra videos, your name in the credits, and more. The link is down below, but let's get back into the video. The streetcar runs every 12 minutes during peak hours, and every 15 minutes during off-peak hours, with the operating hours being 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 2 a.m. Saturday, and 8.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Sundays. The streetcar is also free to ride. This is pretty similar to a lot of other streetcars across the U.S., such as the KC Streetcar or the Tempe Streetcar. Up until 2018, the fee to ride the Tico streetcar was $2.50. But in 2018, a three-year grant from the Florida Department of Transportation provided fare-free service on the Tico streetcar. These fare-free rides were expected to expire in 2021 when the grant expired. However, due to the success of the ridership on the Tico streetcar after making it fare-free, the grant has been extended. Where the Tico streetcar really differs from a lot of similar downtown streetcars is due to its rolling 
going stock. The Tico Streetcar mainly utilizes replica Bernie cars from the Gamaco Trolley Company at their facility in Ida Grove, Iowa. These replica cars have been on the system since it opened back in 2002. However, some have undergone refurbishment since then. These streetcars can be driven from either end of the vehicle and feature a replica 1920s style wooden interior. They also operate an open bench Breezer streetcar and most importantly, an actual Bernie streetcar. Number 163 on the Tico line is an actual Bernie car that operated for the Tampa and Ybor Street Railway. Number 163 was actually found being used as a storage shed in Sulphur Springs, Florida, and after an insane restoration effort, it was restored for service on the Tico line. For years, the city of Tampa has wanted to convert the Tico streetcar into an actually respectable light rail line rather than just using it as a tourist trolley. With high demand and a lot of local support, the county looked into funding an expansion and modernization of the system using a one cent sales tax. The sales tax had been approved in the county, however, Florida in its infinite wisdom ruled this sales tax as unconstitutional three years after it was passed. This practically put the expansion project into limbo and locked up almost half a billion in funds from being used on the project. However, if a miracle happens and the improvements are approved, then the plan is to acquire modern light rail transit rolling stock that would utilize pantographs instead of trolley wires and utilize low level boarding that would speed up boarding especially for those needing assistance. The project would also come with major extensions extending the line north through downtown, along Florida Avenue, and south along Tampa Street. However, due to a transit-hostile state government, it's unlikely to happen within the next few years, barring federal support or overwhelming local support. Tampa is a fast-growing city, and it's already seeing the problems that overwhelming sprawl and car-dependent planning causes. While the Tico streetcar isn't a major transit system, and it is a small rail transit system with cities like Kansas City, Tempe, Arizona, and El Paso, Texas eclipsing it in size, the Tico streetcar is still a very important transit link in Tampa that connects multiple different walkable neighborhoods. The system first being built was a first step towards a more sustainable and less car-dependent version of Florida's second largest metro area, and hopefully an extension and expansion of this system are on the horizon and can help make Tampa, Florida a better place to live. But if you take in the Tico Street car, how do you think they should expand or improve it? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd like to thank Tony Stunts and all of my other patrons who help support the channel. And if you want to support the channel yourself and get benefits like early access to videos, extra videos, and your name in the credits, the link is down below. Also down there, you'll find links to my other socials. I post updates and extra content there. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your support. Also, this is kind of a remake of an older video I did, but I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see y'all on the next one.